Hi, this is Aaron. Uh, today is Saturday the 6th of June and it's day nine on the allotment. <laughs> um, I've been here a little while today already and I've been around watering everything and I've been having a look around. Um, let's uh, take a look around and uh, see everything that's uh, going on because there is a lot going on. Here is the half plot. Uh, that I did. Now, I may be imagining things, but I think I can start to see some colour coming into these raspberry canes. Um, I've just watered the, the ground, so it might be that, but I don't know. Um, that looks to me as if these sticks may actually be coming into life. We'll see. Um, the lettuce that all got eaten, actually, those slug pellets I put down, it looks as if they're they're having, you know, a bit of a recovery, seeing if they can recover. So uh, I'll keep an eye on them, uh, keep them well watered and keep putting the slug pellets down um, to see uh, if we can get anything from that. This is interesting because I had really thought that because nothing was really growing here and that everything that had come through um, was going to come through, um, I thought what I should do, and I'm still sort of mulling this over, but I thought what I should do was maybe take out the broad beans that had grown here um, and uh, to completely redig this bed. Um, this time properly, get some air into the soil, um, pull out the weeds properly. But then I've come here today. Now, the last time I was here was Thursday. And this little fella here is brand new. Um, he's come from nowhere. He wasn't there before. And so um, maybe I should be leaving this alone. I, I really don't know now. Um, whatever happens, I've got to get these weeds out. These weeds really are starting to uh, take over that bed. So uh, I'll, I'll need to go through that. But in terms of completely redigging it now, I'm not so sure because what I might be doing is interfering with something that, that's growing, that I want. So not sure about that. Now this is my second bed and this is a bit of a success story now because all of the potatoes that I planted have all come up. They were muddied up last weekend and they have grown a lot since then. I mean all of these now are poking up and they're going to need muddying up again. Um, also the ground at this end where I planted some more tomatoes at the end of uh, last weekend, the earth is starting to look as if something's pushing against it. So uh, I might be imagining things but I also possibly have some potatoes coming through there as well. Um, over on this one here, uh, which was the third bed that um, we started to dig but didn't get very far on, but I did put some potatoes in. There's four potatoes in here. Nothing yet. Um, it'll be interesting to see how these perform against those ones uh, because they were planted at exactly the same time. They are exactly the same variety. Um, so the only thing that's different is the soil. Um, right, well, these potatoes, the success story, has actually given me a bit of a dilemma. Let me turn the, um, the camera around and then uh, I can tell you about it. The dilemma is that they are growing so quick and I need to muddy them up. Um, but I'm kind of running out of soil. Um, all the soil that's there is already muddied up. Um, there's only so much more I can dig. Now I'm going to try and dig some more today but I'm thinking that what I maybe need to do is to have to um, limit somehow the amount of soil or make the soil go further. Now I've been having a lot of encouragement um, since I started putting these up on YouTube and actually this is the first weekend since I put the first video up on YouTube um, there's five of them up there now, um, so there's six, seven and eight still to come. 
Um, and of course this one when I've finished it as well as whatever ones that we make after that, which hopefully will be a lot. Um, but I've, I, I've had some really fabulous feedback, advice and encouragement, particularly from um, Rebelesque, um, but also uh, from uh, Jeff and Charlie uh, up in the northeast who, um, who run um, Allotment Nightmare and Allotment Nightmare 2. Um, both, all, all three of those that I've just mentioned, they're in our featured um, channels list. Um, if you haven't looked at them, um, please do, because they are lovely people and um, they've all done some amazing things with their allotment. Um, I, I, I am deeply in awe of everything that they've achieved and I thank all three of you um, for the fantastic advice and help and encouragement that you've been giving me. So uh, big shout outs there to everyone across the web in YouTube land. Um, anyway, on Jeff and Charlie's um, channel, um, they looked at an experiment of how to muddy up potatoes and they used a bag to put over the potato so that you then put um, the soil into the bag that was round the potato and so you know it was easier to uh, muddy up and you didn't use so much soil and uh, in theory the, the, the bag would fill with potatoes. Now that seems to me to be a good way to limit um, the amount of soil that you have. I'm looking around other people's allotments and there are mountains of soil that are being built around their potatoes and I just haven't got it. Um, to go around. I'd need to, you know, really um, dig something. Um, <laughs> I, I'd need to be here a week just solely doing digging day after day after day um, to be able to get to that level. So I've been looking around and I'm wondering whether to try that. Now I do note that, you know, Jeff was very disappointed with the experiment and it didn't give him um, the huge numbers of potatoes that he was hoping for. But you know, their experiment was all about getting more potatoes, whereas I'm thinking that perhaps it's all about um, conserving soil. So maybe I will get more doing it that way than if I run out of soil to muddy up. So I'm still thinking about that. Therefore, I'm looking for something. Now, it's got to be the right width. It's got to be the right height. Um, one of the really big... Um, black bin liners I think is probably too big um, one of the pedal bins I looked at one of those and that was too femur so uh, I'm, I'm looking around to see if I can find something suitable and I'm going to go to the supermarket later to uh, see if I can and uh, if I do um, I'll bring that over and uh, try that tomorrow so uh, that's one that's one dilemma I've got um, it's got to the stage where there are lots of things popping up um, so I want to get the third bed dug, but I have to get the first bed uh, weeded. Um, if I take you over here, we're now pretty sure that these are either raspberry or blackberry um, bushes, canes, plants. Now one of the issues that I've got is that down here, in addition to the blackberries and raspberries or whichever they are, there's also bindweed growing and it's starting to uh, um, twine around them. I've pulled a load of it off um, today when I've, when I've been here. Um, but really and truly I need to clear this area of the bindweed. Um, we've also got um, dock plants uh, growing up now. Um, I watched a fantastic video um, from Alice Fowler um, that showed how to uh, take up dock plants and also gave me some fantastic advice on cooch grass, uh, which is what was growing in the soil in, um, in the beds um, and what this stuff is on top. It's nasty to get rid of, but she's given some fantastic advice on how to do that. Um, so she was talking about the bindweed, she was talking about the cooch grass and she was talking about the dockweed. Um, I've got all three, um, and I really need to um, be pulling this up as well. So uh, the thing with um, a dock plant is that the roots go down really, really deep, um, and it sucks up all the nitrogen. So she says rather than boil it, uh, or sorry, rather than burn it, is put it in a bucket, make a tea out of it, um, don't drink it, but then pour it um, back onto 
uh, the soil because um, then the dock plant has all the nutrients that it's sucked up from its big deep roots uh, that then you're putting back into the soil. Um, so I need to get a bucket, I need to do that, um, I need to weed these, um, I need to be muddying up and I need to be digging this uh, bed. What I can also show you is because uh, it's the start of a new month. Now, I've been trying to do this on a budget and really sort of restricting myself um, on how much to spend at any given time um, in order to get the things, just to see sort of sticking to a strict budget if you can do this. And uh, so far I have. Uh, obviously I've made mistakes. Obviously there have been times when I've had the wrong tools, I've bought the wrong thing. Uh, so, for instance, I shouldn't have bought the spade first, I should have bought the fork first. Um, but, uh, you know, by, by keeping to a strict budget, I'm hoping that, you know, I can sort of uh, prove to myself and anybody else that's interested um, that this isn't an expensive hobby, that you can do um, most of it, you know, bit by bit, build up, so that uh, you get the things you need. So, uh, let's take a look at what's been delivered. So now, you see, uh, in addition to the spade and fork which is there, um, we've also had um, delivered a rake and a Dutch hoe. Now, apparently this style of hoe um, is called a Dutch hoe. Um, it's got a slightly uh, tapered um, uh, end so to help you get to the, the weeds out. So uh, if anybody doesn't know what they're asking for for these things, apparently it is a Dutch hoe. I am told that. Um, I thought it was interesting. Anyway, um, they are both from um, the Spear and Jackson Elements range again, uh, which are bought from Amazon. Um, it's a budget range. Um, it isn't expensive. Um, I think they're sort of 10 and 12 pounds. Um, and uh, if uh, so, well, certainly the fork that I bought, which is in the same uh, range, um, that's been really good. So uh, hopefully this will as well. Um, I'll let you know how I get on with it. Now the other thing that I got is these, which are Draper knee pads. Um, I bought them because, and I don't know if it's because I'm getting old or something, but last week when I was trying to kneel down in, into the dirt, um, I was in absolute agony. And so I bought these. I haven't tried them out yet, but what I'm hoping um, is that uh, they are going to be significantly more comfortable um, and uh, therefore will make the whole experience a bit more pleasurable. So uh, they're here as well. Um, I think I've got pretty much everything I need now. So uh, I, uh, um, anything else that I add to the collection, uh, I'll let you know about. Anyway, back on. Basically, there is lots and lots and lots to keep me busy. Um, too much for me to think about all in one go. Um, I'm going to try and get some plants planted um, as well. So uh, I'd better get on with it. And uh, let's see how we get on at the end of the day. So I'll talk to you later. I'm having to pause a second. Today is a bit of an odd day, really. Um, there's a scene in King Kong where all the, uh, the, the team from the boat fall into this valley and then all these insects come out and they're carnivorous insects, they're quite small um, and they start firing the ammunition at them and they get rid of one wave of insects and then there's another wave that's bigger and then there's another and then there's another and then there's another and then they start to get very aware that they're running low on ammo and it's it's really about not being able to stand up to the relentless march of nature no matter how tough you are, how hard you're going to work at it. And I have to say, today does feel a little bit like that. Um, there is a lot to do, and I promised myself small victories, and that's the attitude that I'm keeping hold of. It's not that I want to quit or anything, it's just that I'm very, very aware of everything that needs to be done. Um, I've taken out the dock leaf, um, that took a lot of digging out because I had to get really deep down, two foot more, um, to get the dock leaf roots. I've found another dock leaf root um, in uh, the third bed that I'm digging, 
Um, the third bed itself is really difficult. There's stones. Um, there's. I, I'm wondering actually if really and truly I, I'll, I'll be able to grow anything in here. And I think it'll be interesting to see whether the potatoes come up. Um, there's also a lot of rubble um, right at the edge of my plot. And I'm starting to wonder if that's been put there deliberately to try and stop the cooch grass um, growing through. I mean, it hasn't worked if that's what it was there for. Um, but I'm wondering if that's what it was there for and whether I should be leaving it alone. Um, I'm, I'm basically trying to open up as much of my plot as I possibly can for growing things. So I'm pushing it as far as to the edge. But I actually don't know if I'm doing the right thing at the moment. Um, been trying out a few things. Um, uh, I used my rake and my hoe um, to do a bit of weeding and raking um, up the, uh, the, um, the debris, really, from on top of the ground, um, all the bindweed and everything. Um, and uh, they're both great. Uh, also been trying out those um, knee pads. Um, they're a brand, a uh, well-known brand, called Draper, and they are gardening knee pads. And I have to say, they are rubbish. <laughs> they're fine I think if you've got really small thin legs which I don't um, they're not the right size they pinch you can't wear them for very long um, you do feel uncomfortable that your circulation is being um, cut off no I don't think it's a great idea and I'm probably not going to be trying them again in terms of the actual protection they provide yeah um, that the, the knees are very well padded and I suppose if your legs are going to fit in that um, size then uh, yeah they're great but uh, for me no they're, they're not working um, and so it's back to the kneeling frame um, or indeed just a cushion um, and my mat so uh, it was an interesting experiment um, I've used them now so I probably can't send them back but uh, I have a feeling they may be appearing on eBay quite soon um, so yeah, I, I, I've also planted um, my first tomato. I've brought a box of tomatoes uh, with me that I've been growing from seed on my windowsill. So uh, I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, show you uh, where he's planted. Here he is, my first tomato plant planted out. Uh, against a cane, I've got a bit of string there so that uh, as he grows up we can keep tying him off so that uh, hopefully we get some tomatoes. Um, I've actually got two varieties of tomatoes here, let me show you them. They are red cherry and they are yellow pear. And uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten left in there. So I need to find a space for ten of them. Um, they've been growing on my windowsill. Um, I've got two more boxes of them. Um, so uh, bringing them down so that uh, hopefully uh, um, they'll grow and we can have some tomatoes. We've reached the end of the day now. Um, it's heading on to evening time now. Um, the uh, shadows are just starting to creep across the allotment um, because we've uh, turned the, uh, the midsummer. Um, it gets dark a little bit earlier now. It's still going to be light for a good while yet. But uh, I think with uh, all the uh, thought that I've been putting into things, it's probably better if I just go away and sleep on everything because I really don't know what to do. I've, as I said, uh, I've been doing a little of everything and therefore it doesn't really feel as if I've done that much of anything. But uh, I'll turn the camera around and uh, show you and uh, we can see uh, what we're up to. There was some weeding that needed to be done here on my potato bed. I didn't get it all done and actually there's uh, quite a lot that I've still missed. Um, but we did get uh, some of it done. Now I'm, I'm a bit worried tomorrow about where this earth is going to come from um, to muddy up my potatoes. Um, we can see my, my one tomato that I planted a second ago, um, so uh, that's there too. Now over on the third bed, some digging has happened. Um, it is significantly wider than the others, and I say it's absolutely full of stones. 
So uh, it doesn't look as if it's travelled that far, but I've actually turned over quite a lot of earth. And uh, I'm going through it to put that very fine till on it. And you can see, I hope, that um, it, it, it is a very fine till that's on that ground. Um, and I'm doing all that by hand, so I'm hoping that it's going to be worth it. I was a bit worried to see uh, weeds appearing um, on my second bed that I'd had this very fine till on. Um, but uh, it's certainly better than the first bed, which is a weedy mess as we thought it was going to be. Um, the decision that I've come to is that I am going to move these, um, but I'm probably not going to do that this week. That was day nine then, um, completed. Probably more thought going into things than actual work, although some work did get done. I've certainly not been idle. Um, but uh, that's day nine completed. I think now we've got a proper plan together and we can approach day 10 properly. So I'll see you tomorrow for day 10. Cheerio, bye.